Resuming debate, reprise de debat, the Honourable Member for Parkdale High Park. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I, uh, I want to thank my colleague from Dartmouth Coal Harbour for his excellent speech and for his passionate, passionate work on the EI issue. He is such a great MP for the constituents of Dartmouth Coal Harbour. Thank you. Uh, we're having a very important uh, debate today, Mr. Speaker, on the issue of employment insurance. And our economy has been through so many ups and downs over the last number of years. Uh, we've seen uh, booms and busts, we've seen uh, rapid technological change, we've seen globalization, we've seen uh, the complete uh, undermining of our manufacturing sector and so many hundreds of thousands of jobs in, in manufacturing that have been lost in this country. Uh, certainly in, in my province of Ontario, uh, we still see communities that are on very, very hard times because of the loss of those good manufacturing jobs and when people do manage to find other work, sometimes after many months of looking, uh, it's usually at a much lower rate of pay and uh, this has sent many families struggling to adapt. People have lost homes, they've uh, had to move communities, it's broken up families. It's been a, a very difficult number of years, Mr. Speaker, and in most modern uh, developed uh, countries there are adjustment programs, adjustment programs to help working people and businesses adapt to a changing economy. Uh, what, what do I mean by adjust? Well, adjustment programs will help uh, with income support, it will help with training, uh, it can help uh, with job search. Uh, a whole range of supports can often be available because while we see the economy shifting and changes taking place, it seems as though so much of the risk of this change is borne by working people, whereas so much of the benefits go to employers who are doing very well. Companies now are sitting on uh, hundreds of billions of dollars of cash that they're not investing in the broader economy. They're doing very well, but we see so many Canadian families struggling. Workers are taking on so much of the risk. And employment insurance was designed to help working people adapt so that we would not be in a situation that, that my grandparents were in, in the Great Depression, where if you were out of work, you had literally nothing. My mother uh, tells me that when she was a child, her, her father, who was unemployed, had to go out and hunt for rabbits. And her, her mom would, would skin and clean the rabbits, and, and my mom would go door to door selling these rabbits to try to get money for them to live uh, because they were practically destitute. We don't want people in this country to be destitute because we are a wealthy country. Employment insurance was designed to help our economy and the people in it adapt to change. However, during the years of the liberal governments, majority liberal governments, during those 12 years, what did we see? We saw the rules for employment insurance. Stop being unemployment insurance. It became employment insurance. And the rules changed and suddenly where you used to have more than 80% of unemployed workers would receive benefits if they were unemployed, suddenly what happened? Uh, fewer and fewer people were qualifying. And the number went down to around 45%. And also during that period, because it was a period uh, when the economy had been growing during that part of the economic cycle, um, the economy uh, was putting more money into the EI fund and there was a big surplus. And what should happen is, during the good times, we have a surplus, and when the economy goes down, we use that surplus to pay out benefits to protect working people, which is what it was designed for. Instead, the Liberals use that surplus, $54 billion worth, to balance the budget. And what did they do when they balanced the budget? They gave corporations a great big fat corporate tax break. That's what they did. And those corporations put that money in their back pocket and said, thank you very much. There was not even a requirement for them to create new jobs. And then the Conservatives came in yep. 
And they did the same thing. They took another $3 billion out of the fund, and they gave it back to uh, they, they put it back into general revenues, and then they gave more corporate tax cuts, and companies said, thank you very much, and they took that money, and now they're sitting on over $600 billion of corporate revenues, and guess what? Today, less than 40% of working people who are unemployed get access to EI benefits. In Toronto, the number is 17%, our largest city, one of the most expensive cities in this country. So what do the Conservatives want to do today? Now that they, they and their predecessors, the Liberals, have stolen this money from EI, and now that they have denied so many people access to EI benefits, what do they want to do? Well, they want to give employers, small businesses, another EI tax break. So that means employees, workers will continue paying the same amount, and uh, employers will get a break. And uh, that doesn't help any unemployed workers, Mr. Speaker. It doesn't give one more unemployed worker any more benefits. It takes more money the, out of the EI fund. And so what do their cousins, their, their, the, who have a very similar approach to the economy, what do their cousins in the Liberal Party want to do? They want to expand that and give that to everybody. You don't have to prove if you've created a new job. Uh, we'll give everybody, all the businesses, uh, a break on their EI premiums. Workers still have to pay the same amount. And, and, and their math is wrong in their proposal, which I suppose Whoops. is not shocking. I suppose uh, uh, we should have expected that from the Liberals. Um, but it's not going to help the working people who actually need to access EI, Mr. Speaker. Um, if they wanted to, to do what the Conservatives, the idea the Conservatives had borrowed from us earlier, which is to um, give a tax credit to small businesses who create jobs, we supported that. It was our idea. The Conservatives took it. We supported that idea. We thought it was a good idea. We disagreed when they cancelled that plan. That was a job creator. But this, this, uh, this idea to further plunder the EI fund, to give that money back to employers, when when it ought to be going to unemployed workers who desperately need that money now. I can tell you there are people living in my riding who, who have to make a decision every month about whether they buy food or keep a roof over their heads. They have to, they have to walk miles because they can't afford the TTC. There are people who are truly struggling, not just in my town but across this country. And I think it's a disgrace that... that uh, that some in this House are trying to pull the wool over people's eyes, that they're trying to, saying they're trying to do something for unemployed workers, when this government is, is overseeing a stagnating economy and their handmaidens in the Liberal Party are just basically helping them pull the wool over people's eyes. But, you know, uh, Mr. Speaker, Canadians don't have a choice between the bad economics of the Conservative Party and the bad math of the Liberal Party, they can actually choose a party that will defend working people that actually has really good, strong, progressive ideas for growing this economy, and that's the New Democratic Party, Mr. Speaker. I want to make it very clear, we don't support this, this idea that they're proposing here. What we do support is protecting the EI account so that the money in that account cannot be plundered, but that it's used for the purpose it was designed, that is an adjustment program to help working people adjust during a period of calamity for them, which is when uh, they lose their job. Um, we do support a hiring tax credit. We think that's not a panacea, but a, a positive thing to do. Um, and we do support restoring benefits, higher benefits, so that when people do lose their job, they get benefits to protect that during protect them during that time of turmoil. We also have a lot of good ideas about how to create jobs in this country, Mr. Speaker. It calls on government to play a leadership role and to, uh, to set a path that will give business confidence that there's going to be a, a strong, stable, new Democrat government at the helm that will encourage them to invest and create jobs. But it's not this plan that we're being, uh, that we're being offered today. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments? Questions and commentaires, the Honourable Member for Winnipeg North. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. And, you know, I always take some exception 
when the New Democrats uh, want to take shots at, uh, at my party. Uh, you know, they often refer to corporate uh, income tax. And I should let her know that uh, when I was in the Manitoba legislature that the NDP government took great pride in reducing corporate income tax uh, from, I think it was 19% uh, to 12%, to and that was even at a time in which there was a recession uh, going on. So we don't have to take any lessons uh, from the NDP on taxation policies. What I would ask the member is to provide clarification why it is that uh, when Mr. Layton was the leader of the New Democratic uh, Party, and he seemed to uh, support what it is that we are proposing today, why would she oppose something that Jack Layton and the, yesterday's NDP would have actually supported? Why would she vote against this uh, motion that is going to generate uh, potentially in excess of 150,000 jobs across this, our land. Mm -hmm. Honourable Member for Parkdale High Park. Well, could, could, could potentially, who knows, uh, it's all wisp and smoke, who knows. Um, let, let me just say, what is very clear and indisputable, that the Liberal Party, when it was in power, took over $50 billion from the EI fund, money that belonged to the working people of Canada. That money went it was used to balance the books, and then they gave corporations a massive yeah. corporate tax cut. That, Mr. Speaker, is indisputable. That is fact. That is history. They're embarrassed about that now, and I think they're trying to kind of buffer themselves going into an election next year to, to not be accused of, of having abandoned unemployed workers. But the facts are the facts, Mr. Speaker, and if people think that they can trust that party, when it comes to managing the EI fund, then they might as well trust the Conservatives across the aisle, because they're about both, both the same in that regard. Questions and comments? Just to come on side, the Honourable Member from Mississauga Streetsville. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I had the opportunity to listen to the member for Parkdale High Park, and I'd like her to clarify a few of the positions uh, of the NDP so they're on record in this House. Is it still the position of the NDP, and I know she's the former finance critic of her party, is it still a position of the NDP that people should only have to work 45 days out of a year to be entitled to collect full EI? We certainly know that's the position of the Liberal Party, so I'd like to, her to clarify the position on that. And second is, could she explain why her and her party voted three times, three budgets against the new hiring tax credit brought in by our government in three successive budgets. Can she explain why her and her members voted against that tax credit three years in a row? The Honourable Member from Parkdale, High Park. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, 45 days, that sounds like their buddies in the Senate that they're talking about. Uh, uh, the NDP doesn't have any members there, so... Uh, but I will, uh, with pleasure, say why we voted against their budget. We supported the reduction of, of small business taxes, a small business tax credit for hiring. It was our idea. We were glad to see them take it. However, they had it buried in one of their many omnibus budget bills, their undemocratic omnibus budget bills that included gutting our environmental protections, attacking First Nations benefits, uh, laying off scientists, it, their undemocratic budget bill, supposed budget bill, which, which is transforming the way government is run in Canada, most of it very undemocratically. And yes, we are proud as New Democrats. We voted against those omnibus budget bills, and we will continue to do so, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments? Yes, Julie Comantai, Leonard, our deputy. Yeah, I'm a member for the Senate on back. A quick question, please. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I thank my colleague for her speech, and very obviously, uh, the Liberals are not right today. They get the same answer all the time, and when they talk, uh, when we look back to when they raided the EI case, uh, they're doing the same thing here. What I'd like to ask my colleague is that, yes, we believe in a solution that we've put forward that the Conservatives took up, which is to say to give a job credit for hiring to businesses. And this is a viable solution, and at least it would really allow for some respect of our workers and to ensure that the EI fund 
will be there for the purposes for which it was created. The Honorable Member for Parkdale High Park, a very brief answer, please. Thank you very much. And yes, obviously, this is really a contrast. We do not want to raid the EI fund, as the other political parties have done, but we support tax credits or for small and medium-sized businesses, and particularly in just indeed in the province of Manitoba, it's the only province in which there are not taxes on small uh, businesses, and it's because there's an NDP government there, and it's, this is a party that understands the value of small and medium businesses in Canada because they create jobs.